Okay, this is the first floor video, and we're going to pick up a few spares, if you will. Back to the electric service panel, for example. Um, this is what it looks like when the load center is completely installed and together. And there's a couple of things going on here. Is that the manufacturer expects some duplicity. So if this fades all out, you can have this as a reference. If this fades out, you can have that as a reference. That's what the manufacturer wants, is some duplicity. Another thing, now this is code, but this is writing, writing, handwriting, not cursive writing, but handwriting. Some people call it printing, but that's not printing. This is printing. And the code says is that these should be printed, not written. I know it's a small thing, but you know, that's what I'm here for. See, printed, you know, they have little stickers. Manufacturer actually sent stickers that you could use to do this. But that's what we got here. Uh, that's the energy notice, by the way. And this is the uh, preventative termite treatment notice, by the way. Earlier, we had some discussion about whether this door was, button was high enough, and it's actually over five feet high, so it's, it's plenty high. Go down. Mr. Farr here, can I come in? Door's open for you, Mr. Farr, come on in. Okay. Coming along, we're going up to the front door. And much like the exterior, uh, I don't always get to do it this way, but I like to work counterclockwise, so that way there's some order and some semblance and um, you know the repetition. Hopefully it um, helps put you in the here and now. There's your ring. Ding dong! Avon calling. Okay. We have double pane vinyl frame windows, and we expect them to be pretty much perfect. And I'm going to open most of them. I've already opened these, by the way. Um, but what's interesting about this room, judging from its location, next to the butler's pantry, the low chandelier, this looks like a formal dining area. That's what it looks like to me. I mean, we could use it for anything. And the reason why I'm going about this is these receptacle outlets in here are all GFCI protected. So if you had some computer equipment in here, you're going to make this an office, that would be a good thing. It's a little more complicated than that. It's a little more complicated than that. That's something that you would ask for. It's something that would be extra. That would be a change order. This circuit that has these GFCI protected circuits also is on the same circuit as the butler's pantry. We're getting iffy here, and it's on the same circuit as the, this kitchen countertop right here, this circuit. So it's the same kitchen countertop as the dining room. And I'm just not sure that's copacetic. I'm not sure that, uh, I don't see that very often. I don't think that's a, I don't think that's a thing. I'll make a phone call, a couple phone calls and ask some questions. Every kitchen is supposed to have two circuits. So this one circuit, this one receptacle is, meets that need because it, only because it's part of the dining room circuit. I'm not sure that's the intent of the code. Then the rest of these receptacle outlets are on their own kitchen circuit. Now the refrigerator is supposed to have his own receptacle, not circuit, receptacle. The refrigerator could be on this circuit, that circuit, I guess. But he's on his own circuit. So he's, he's independent. He's not GFCI protected either, by the way. So he's, he's on his own circuit. So I'm, I'm not sure what that's about. Microwave, I haven't run it yet. I have not. I was meaning to, but I kind of got ahead of myself. I just wanted to go home. I have run these guys. These bad boys, you have convection up here. The lower one does not have a convection feature. But you do have your bacon broiled for both of them. 
And then uh, you have convection for the upper. Okay. We'll find out about the microwave. It's still got the PF on it, so hit cancel. But I'll get in there. The gas burners all work. There we go. Come on, there we go. Woo. All right. This is the kitchen vent fan. This is a nice, powerful vent fan. Yeah, I like to cook, and that moves a lot of air. And to have a vent fan like that, you're supposed to have an air makeup vent. That's what this guy is. That he does not belong to the rest of the system, the air conditioning system. That filter is for the kitchen. That filter is independent. Now, my understanding is, is that you're supposed to have a valve valve for this guy. An accessible valve. What is that valve called? It'll be on the report. Oh man, I can't do anything with these gloves. Sorry for the muffled sound. Thank you, Corona. So up until a couple of days ago, I wasn't even aware that these guys had a, an isolation valve or whatever it's called. It'll be on the report. Dishwashers are running. Kitchen Island. Kitchen Island. This will be your trash can. <laughs> there's a there's a meme that says the nicer the kitchen, the harder it is to find the trash can. So this receptacle outlet, this is fine. And that's only about four inches. So this receptacle outlet, they're not supposed to be recessed more than six inches. They're not. They're not supposed to be recessed more than six inches. And then when a countertop extends more than 10 inches, it's supposed to have a portable. But sometimes they, they install these slats and that, I guess that meets the intent of the code. I like it personally because I like the clean look. Uh, I personally wouldn't have a problem with it. I also would not stand or sit or dance on that, okay? So uh, I would respect it as if it didn't have these. I just would. But in the meantime, there's no excuse for this receptacle outlet to be underneath this. If it was over here, like this, that, that, that meets it. I'm not even sure that guy's necessary, but anything you plug into that, the cord's gonna be draping over it. And not only that, it's not it's against code. It's not approved. This is called Oh, you don't have one. Jeez, okay. <laughs> Man, life is good. Life is good. Thank you, Mr. Builder. I think I'd like I'd like to believe I had something to do with that. Huh. I'm going to fall down again. Oh, not again. I'm, now it's my turn to fall down. Little guy said, what is that? Huh, interesting. One third horsepower garbage disposal. Dishwasher has its own receptacle. You should say GFCI protected because it is. Just like that one. Is that little white sticker underneath there? He should have one as well. Look at the, look at the floor. The floor underneath here. They got some water on that. They kind of boogered it up. I don't know. It's a new house. New house. You know, if I was buying a five-year-old house, I don't think I'd buy that so much. But buying a 25-year-old house, I'd care, care less. But if I'm buying a new house, I don't know. Right out of the gate, like an old house. Three horsepower, like I said. These floors are vinyl, so I'm not going to do a moisture check on those. Reading. Vinyl windows like we had before, just saying. These all work fine. The door works fine. We got a little bit of air gap right in there. Can you see that air? I can see it. You think air and water can get through there? I do. That's what I think. You think you put a little Wear a felt in there that take care of it, just like it cost you a dollar and a half. Yeah, I think a dollar and a half would make it pretty good. I don't know. It's not my business. 
coming along. Master bedroom. Southern exposures. Southern exposures. Thermostat. Radiant heat. You're not supposed to have. I mean, I would. I'd have a thermostat in my bedroom. Pretty nice. Got a lock on the door. So a thermostat is a dumb animal. If you put it on 72, 74, 54, 154, whatever you put it on it, it's not going to stop until it gets there, until it's pacified. It may never be pacified or whatever. It might be 72 and pacified. All it knows is what you want it asked it to do. And all it is, the only place it's located is in here with you. Maybe. Unless you set the thermostat and left and close the door. It might be 72 here, but it could be 172 out there if people scream and stuff. Hey, turn the air conditioning down. You don't care, you're comfortable. The door's locked, I'll have to text you. But anyway, again, I'm a hypocrite. Yeah, I understand why you want the bedroom. Two reasons. One, it's in my bedroom. And the second reason is that it's not out on the walls, you know. We've got enough things on our walls without it, you know, fighting with our art. Some, some people have art. I'd like to have some, maybe. Master shower door. See this little rubber gasket? See this guy? It should be on the bottom as well. If you're in there, and you're jumping around trying to you know, get your elbows and your kneecaps and your ankles washed, Water splashing off of you. It's, it's, it's going to come under there. It's going to come out here. You're going to have a big old towel. You probably should have one anyway. I guess. You can't wear it. But it should have a gasket. It should have a gasket. This is the garden tub. Hot's on the left, cold's on the right. Stopper works. These are all GFCI protected. If these trip, you don't have power here, go to the half bath. The half bath on this floor downstairs. That's where you go and you reset it. This is called a dilution valve. Some people call them temperance valves. Call it what you will. But that regulates the hot and cold water. So the idea is that you don't, you know, uh, scold yourself. So that's a safety device. They're very popular these days. Very cold. Coming along, this is the master closet. Pretty good size. This scuttle hole, it should be insulated. It's hot. I got an infrared image of it. It is broadcasting heat down in here. And the heat goes to less heat, so it's always migrating in here. It just, you know. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not working. Some of them I have. Some of them I have. Carpet. Okay, we got carpet in here. Wait a minute. I know that I'm coming back. I'm coming back for the microwave. I keep saying that because I got to remind myself. But I do kind of like to shut it down as I go. Thanks to the corona is why you have this mask. That's why I look this way. That's why I got gloves. You know, you have your safety is almost as important as my safety. But your safety is important to me, and that's why I sound like this, and I'm, uh, I apologize for that. But uh, I forgot where I was going now. I tested all these. Fireplaces are supposed to have a hearth, according to code. Now, here's the thing about the code. So we'll talk about code in some other areas, I guess. If the product is listed, if the product is listed, then the manufacturer specification supersedes code. If you read the code book over and over and over again, it says, or as stated by the manufacturer. The code is getting more and more towards that and relying you know, uh, for itself back into framing and you know wiring diagrams and those kinds of things so as it gets to specific appliances code is every year uh, every code cycle two years so 
what I'm getting at is if the manufacturer specifies that a hearth extension isn't necessary, then it's not. Regardless of what the code says. And there's your file. Right there. It's beautiful, huh? Instant romance. Oh man, I said something wrong. Push the button. Okay. That's the way it works in my house. This is my house. This is your house. This is a clothes dryer bag. It's supposed to have a label on it. It's supposed to have a label on it. So the label tells you how far, how big it is and how long it goes so that when you buy laundry equipment, you can purchase the equipment that would have, be strong enough, it would work well with this vent pipe. If you've got an underpowered clothes dryer, for example, it might not exhaust like it should. Four prop. This is the main water shutoff valve. We'll be talking about that. That's off. That's on. <coughs> Laundry. House faces the door. It's on the west wall. Speaking of cleanup, this is the office study. On the other side of this wall is where we have the exposed uh, expansion joint. Control joint, I don't speak all the language, this is where we have the exposed uh, post tension cable in. And this is the half bath. This all works fine, I've been in here looking at it. Poking at it, resetting. That's how I know. I had to go find it. I tripped it. I had to go look for it. Now, just one quick zoom because I can't do this upstairs so much. So I'm going to roll this on out. This is the mud room. This is where Mr. Fire comes in. Real quick, coming out the front door, looking for air gaps. This is your main sewer clean out. That's a good video because I just showed you the main water shutoff valve. So these are the clean outs in the front flower bed for the main sewer clean out. <laughs>